you are about to listen to a Jason Burgos exclusive interview. Good. I'm looking forward to talking to you. Am I uh, one of many people trying to get interviews with you lately after that that fight uh, this past week? Yeah, Saturday? yeah. Interview, <laughs> inter- interview situation has changed, bro. I used to beg for interviews. Now I'm getting them like nonstop. I love it, though. That's good. That's good. I mean, I so then you know I won't take too much of your time. Uh, first, uh, the first question I ask is, uh, just give me a little background on yourself and, and what made you take the journey into becoming a professional MMA fighter. Ah, uh, bro. Uh, so I, I love martial arts, and uh, I've always liked martial arts since I was a little kid. But I was never really interested growing up. Like I wasn't gonna do it, you know. Cause people used to make fun of people in geese and stuff. <laughs> but uh, I got kicked out of high school for headbutting the security guard by accident, mm. and so. When that came across, it just kind of like put me in a situation where the teacher at the school was a martial arts instructor, and he was like, you know, people in the class were like, basically telling me they'd kick my butt, and I was like, no way possible. <laughs> so I went to the class, and I, I went to all the students, but the old dude beat me up. Except for the old guy beat me up, I was like, this stuff, this stuff works, you know? If he's 50 something years old, almost 60 years old, they would have beat me up. I was like, this stuff works. So... <laughs> I was fascinated, you know. I just, I've always just loved combat. So that just really took me to the next level. And, you know, ever since then, I haven't turned around. I haven't looked back. I, I used to ride skateboards. They called me Skateboard Kev. But once I started fighting, that was it. That was a wrap. Was there ever a specific martial art that you started in? Or you went to, like, a gym and just did straight MMA training Kung right fu. away? I started off in Kung Fu. So I, oh. I started off as, yeah, as, a, as a Kung Fu practitioner. So everybody that uh, I was going to get the first just did Kung Fu and, you know, a bunch of kids got kicked out of high school and stuff, so mm. I was just thinking, like, you know, if I could beat them up, I could beat anybody up. But sure <laughs> enough, served them. Mm-hmm. Now, so when you get the call from the UFC to fight Santos on a couple weeks' notice, is the thinking automatically, yes, I'm going to do it? Or when you hear it's, it is Tiago Santos, is there a pause, you know, let me think about this? Or since the guy was a, a wrecking machine from the last year before the branch fight, what, what, what was your thought process when you get that call? I didn't even know who he was. I was like... <laughs> Like, who's this bum? I was like, yeah, I'm going to beat this fool up. Uh-huh. And then I started looking him up, and I was like, yeah, maybe he is a bum. And then we showed up to the night of the fight, and he wasn't no bum that night. So mm. hats off to him, you know? When you, you know, when you're backstage officially as a UFC fighter, are you a little awestruck at all? You know, that this is the goal you had set for yourself, you finally reached it? Or, or were you a little bit more prepared because you were on the Contender Series and it wasn't, you know, too nerve-wracking? Well, you know, the Contender Series, it it, uh, it it definitely did help me out a lot as far as uh, mentally being prepared and stuff. But, you know, um, as far as everything goes, man, you know, I, I wasn't nervous or anything. I felt like I was – I felt like, you know, my dad always tells me this. My dad says when I talk to my dad on the phone, he goes, when you, when you are where you're supposed to be, it feels good, you know, and I felt like I was where I was supposed to be, so it felt good. I mean, I didn't have no stress. I didn't have no problems. Everything just felt natural, you know what I mean? I was mm-hmm. like, damn, what took so long? That's the only thing that was going through my brain. What took so long? I mean, that's impressive. <laughs> it took so long. It only it was three years for you. I mean, you know, many fighters talk about serious nerves and an adrenaline dump starting that enduring that first UFC fight. Were you feeling, how were you feeling when you entered the cage and during the fight? Did you go through any of that that you hear a lot of people go through? Nah, I thought it was my moment. I was just, I was just thinking, I was like, this is my moment right here. Time to shine. You know what I mean? All that training you did, all that, all those practices, all those sparring sessions, this is it right here. Let's go make it work. So I just went out there. I tried to make it work, but like I said, he wasn't no bum that night. So he showed up, and he was ready to bang. And I was just thinking to myself, I was like, dang, what, why you had to show up tonight out all night? <laughs> How much preparation did you do on him? Did you watch any video, or you just worried about yourself, what you do, and then you figured, okay, that would be enough? Well, I let my coaches do what they do. Uh, I watched two videos. I watched the David Branch fight, mm-hmm. and then I watched the um, the Anthony Smith fight. So I knew it was a toss up on how he performed, and um, I really just wasn't nervous. You know, I went in there knowing knowing I could possibly take him out at any point in time, knowing that if I went out there and fought my fight, you know, it'd be easy work. But you know, he came out there, he showed up, big boy came to scrap. So it was fun. How would you grade your performance a few days of removed from uh, now? A two. Out of ten? Out of yeah, five? a two. A two. A two what, out of ten. What did you feel you didn't do what you wanted to do? Like, where did you feel you, you made your mistakes? Uh, I was going for the armbar, 
and I started thinking about, like, I don't do this in the classroom, so why am I doing it now? So I kind of, like, stopped securing it. Mm. And I started thinking about a triangle, mm. which was horrible. And uh, it's, it's just many different things that I could have did, mm. you know, a, a tad bit different that I, I feel would have been better. Um, I feel like I could have fought a better fight. I feel like I should have, when I was doing my little scrambles, I could have stood back up and got to the feet, but I feel like I just wasn't worried about it. I got caught in a jiu-jitsu mindset instead of seeing uh, MMA pretty. So, you know, it's just a lot of little different things that I feel like I could have did differently to have a better executed fight that I didn't do. Mm-hmm. So, you know, things that I promise you won't happen next time, for sure, for sure it won't happen next time. But, again, that, that's what happens when you fight a veteran, you know what I mean? You got you to gotta go out there and you got to be on top of your game because if not, a veteran will make you pay for every mistake that you make. I mean, so, sp- I made a few mistakes. Mm-hmm. I won't make that again. Speaking of veteran, speaking of making, uh, you know, not making mistakes, you know, in a lot, a lot of the different sports you hear when you make that jump to the highest levels, be it from college, amateurs, into the professionals or what, what have you, that there is a talent jump. Did you feel that at all when fighting Tiago Santos compared to the guys you fought for a while? Did you feel like, okay, this is UFC level. This is different than what I've dealt with before. You know what? I would like to say, yeah, but at the same time, no, not really. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I've had tough fights always, mm-hmm. and every fight, every fight, everybody's a little bit tougher. Some fights, people do certain things that people don't do in other fights. So everybody has a high level, you know what I mean? I've always fought guys with a good level. I always fought, always fought guys with a sharp mind when it came to fighting and things like that. So when it came down to it, no, no, I, I didn't feel like, okay, now I'm in the big leagues. I just felt like, all right, straight. You got me? I bet you next time you won't get me. So I was just thinking in my head, like, ah, uh, these dudes are the same as everybody else, mm-hmm. you know? He can be caught in a submission. I hit him with a punch. He got rocked. I was like, he can be rocked just like anybody else, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and this is, supposed to be, this is supposed to be number 13, you know what I mean? Truth be told, he can even be higher than 13, you know? And if you look at the division, there's a lot of old guys either moving up weight classes or they're done. So when I looked at it, I was like, this is, this is one of the toughest guys in the division, still up and coming. I'm like, so when I smacked him with a couple shots and he felt it, but I hit him with a knee, and he started shooting for takedowns, and you know, just it just made me feel like, nah, this is where I need to be. 185 doesn't matter how big these guys are; I'll get a little bit bigger, I'll smash them. Like, but this is where I need to be because these guys aren't ain't nothing special. He didn't feel nothing special. I mean, he just felt like another another guy I was fighting. He didn't hit harder than anybody else. You know, he didn't do anything too much spectacular. He just caught me on a good day. He just did his thing. Is middleweight your optimal posi- uh, division, or, or would welterweight even interest you at all? Nah, you know what? Welterweight is a big is a big weight cut. Mm-hmm. Um, that last five pounds kill me. Yeah. So I'm not really, I'm not really super interested in uh, doing big weight cuts. So I'm not really interested in going to 170. I'll do some catch weight fights though. If somebody wants to fight me at 175, or if somebody wants to fight at 180, you know, I'll do it. But um, I like 185. I love 185. I love the way I feel going into the fight. I like being able to eat. I like being able to enjoy my life. I like not stressing. I like to let the other guys stress. You know, let them kill weight. Let them kill all that stuff. Let their bodies hurt. I'm not with all that. So, I like 85. What's your walk around weight? Usually? Uh, I, I can get high. The highest I've ever got up to was 210. Mm-hmm. Um, but normally I walk around at about 200 even. Okay. I, I get no higher than 200 most of the time. You know, especially when I'm in shape. Yeah. So, you know, I ain't that big. I ain't, I ain't a big. I ain't a big middleweight. You know, but I'm also a grow. I'm also a growing boy. Exactly. So, yeah. All right, you know, so, so I'm not really stressing it. When you know Dana White in the post fight, first post fight press conference talked a bit about you know how you ended up on the show and all these things, and you know he called he referred to you as a big mouth, but he also admitted yeah. he respects what you did for them and in the fight and you and how you you know how you really impressed them. How do you feel about that? One and two, do you feel you are a big mouth that loves talking trash? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love to talk. I, I really, really do love to talk. So. I mean, I don't have a problem with that. And at the end of the day, Dana White is my boss. And uh, so, you know, when he says big mouth, I take it as a compliment. You know what I mean? For him to even mention my name, I take it as a compliment. And uh, I do talk a lot. I mean, I talk a whole lot. Anytime you're you're able to be on bottom getting smashed by a guy as good as Thiago and you're still talking, obviously that guy likes to talk a lot. So uh, growing up, my grandpa used to call me Jabba Jaws. So when he called me big mouth, <laughs> it was just, it was just a, you know, a relapse to Jabba Jaws. Mm-hmm. So I kind of thought it was cool. I thought it was interesting. I thought, you know, I was like, hey, my manager actually wanted to change my name from Trailblazer to Big Mouth. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. 
I, I better watch my next paperwork real closely because it might say Big Mouth and not Trailblazer. <laughs> I mean, aside, on a side note from the UFC stuff, I saw you fought for Bellator in March, getting a submission win in the first round. Were you surprised you didn't get brought back for you know for another fight or offered a contract by them, or was that always a planned one on one and done you know for the Bellator? Nah, I mean, uh, I like the B, you know what I mean? The B is cool. You know, my, one of my favorite letters is B, Trailblazer, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It's capital T, capital B. Mm-hmm. So, uh, uh, nah, no stress, man. No stress. Whatever whatever uh, the universe had mapped out for me, however the big man had everything going for me, that's how I was going to take it. So, uh, you know, my walkout song was was an inflammation of how I felt about the whole thing. You know, at the end of the day, it was all a bigger plan, you know what I mean? It wasn't up to me where I was going to be in life. It wasn't none of that. It was just up to me to put in the hard work and to continue to go forward and not let nothing deter me from, from doing ultimately what I wanted to do in life. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, whether it was Bellator, whether it was UFC, whether it was whatever, I'm thankful for whatever. And uh, I'm super thankful that it's uh, UFC. You know what I mean? Having a, white, having a boss like Dana White and having all that celebrity power, uh, that's pretty dope. So I can live with that. I enjoy that. I enjoy that tremendously. Is there any talk yet of uh, when your next fight will be, who are possible opponents, or have the UFC or your manager contact the UFC regarding when you'll be in the cage again soon? No, nobody has done that. Um, so I caught the little the, the press conference after, and Dana White said he'd like to have me back in there. You know, um, He didn't necessarily say soon, but he said with a full fight camp. And I'm healing up great, and I'm feeling great. Um, but the first time I ever helped the UFC fighter get ready for a fight was Sage Northcutt getting ready for the Mickey Gall fight. He just so happened to be at the right gym, and I just happened to be at the right gym at the right time. We just kind of ran into each other. I ended up going to his house, helping him get ready. So uh, I know UFC has a fight coming up at the Madison Square Garden, and I know they're trying to make a historical bout between uh, who used to be 170-pound king versus who used to be 185-pound king, Anderson Silva versus GSP. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think that's pretty dope. But I also would like to get even with uh, Mickey Gall for you know trashing me, helping, uh, helping Sage. Mm-hmm. So if I can knock out Mickey Gall or even tap out Mickey Gall, I think that'd be pretty cool. So I kind of always wanted to fight him. I mean, who didn't want to fight him when he got into the UFC the way he got into the UFC? So mm-hmm. I think that'd be pretty cool, even if I had to cut a couple extra pounds. Or if I can't get him because, you know, New York's where he's from, I'll take wherever. I'll take whoever. You know what I mean? Like, I'm down to scrap. If I was down to fight Thiago, I'm down to fight whoever. You know what I mean? Ain't nobody in the division more scary than Thiago, if you ask me. Well, besides me. So I'm down. I have to know... If- Sage Northcutt is seems like the poster perfect nice guy. How how does the a self proclaimed Big Mouth and a Sage Northcutt? How do those two guys vibe? That you actually went into his house and you're cool with them. Like, how, what's that dynamic like? Well, I'm I'm one way I'm one way you know in front of the camera. You know, mm-hmm. I talk a lot. I do a lot of a lot of a lot of you know boasting and bragging, and I try and you know get a little flashy and stuff. But outside the camera, I'm a pretty respectful guy. So mm-hmm. you know, it, it was it was it was pretty cool. I think the first, I think like the first uh, two days, I was trying to see if I could outsmile him. You know what I mean? If I could smile more than him, and if I could say yes sir and no sir more than him, it didn't work out. Wow. And then, um, so yeah, by the time the second day was over with, I was like, you know, I'm just gonna be me. And uh, next thing you know, we were riding down the street. He asked me what I thought a girl looked like, and I was like, yeah, she's kind of hot. And he was like, yeah, she is kind of hot. And that kind of like threw me for a loop because he said hot. So I was like, dang, look at Sage. I was like showing his big boy draws. I was like, that's what's up. So. <laughs> I like the kid. The kid's amazing. Um, dude's, the dude's really cool. Uh, I had a good time at his house. Uh, he beat me in almost everything there was, except for the UFC video game. So that was pretty cool. Uh, very very uh, competitive family. Mm. They're, they're amazing, bro. So I, w- I would love to smack Mickey Gall for him. You know what I mean? And I know that was a little bit of a heated battle. He kind of talked about Mickey Gall's spiky hair. So yeah. You know what I mean? I'll, fl- I'll flatten Mickey Gall's wig for him. What do you think of the the new UFC game, the part three? I don't like it. I liked the first two. I was much better in the first two. I don't like the new one. You know, I was better in the first two, too. But you know what? Anybody can get the first two. Number three is a lot harder. Yeah. And uh, I'm with it, bro. You know what? My my biggest thing right now is I'm trying to go ahead and get me enough UFC wins in. I'm trying to get me enough uh, good fights mm. where I look good and I up myself before the next UFC video game comes mm. out because I do not <laughs> want to have my character sorry. That would be the worst thing ever to have a sorry character on the UFC video game. What would all my your, buddies go home and after a what would your ratings? Yeah. What would your ratings for each stat you think you should be? For each stat I think I should be, I think my chin should be at like 100 since I was eating Diago <laughs> stuff, still laughing and smiling. Uh-huh. I think my jiu-jitsu should be pretty up there. Mm. And I think my striker should be pretty cool too because isn't Thiago a striker? Yep. Real strikers make fake strikers shoot for takedowns, and that's that's something I've always said. So he got out there, he seen that movement, he seen that lamb striking system, and that boy said, no, nah, I'm shooting for a takedown. So 
I don't know. I think I should have a decent rating. I ain't gonna think I should have a, a great rating, but just give me a couple more fights before that video game comes out, and I'll show you exactly what the rating should be.